Hello again, my friends, family, loved ones, fellow musicians, fellow artists, fellow boaters. Welcome to vlog number 15. And I'm glad you're all liking it. Um, if you want to get them from now on, please subscribe. Uh, we got a lot, lot of wind and waves today, so uh, this is rocking, so sorry about that. But share the blog um, with your friends. Uh, I also did an art blog. I did, I'm starting to do art lessons. I did an art lesson for my students on, and my friends on um, uh, perspective, and I did a quick painting. As a matter of fact, this, this is the painting that I did real quick to show how to create perspective. Um, and <clears throat> this, is, this is a painting here of the Port of Brunswick. It's a really cool little uh, village. I've been there and it's just about a hundred miles south of where I'm at. <clears throat> and this is, it looks like something out of the 1950s. It's not finished, it's a little wet, but that's what I've been working on. I'm gonna put some people in there, probably a woman pushing a baby in a carriage, but I've been working on that, this here for a week and a half every day, just about. Um, so that, that's my art, what's going on with my art. Um, <clears throat> Kibo's laying right here in the sun, so we'll make sure he gets to say hi before everybody goes. But yeah, share my blog with people. You can just copy and paste. It takes a second. Um, so <clears throat> I know I, I promised you the story about the critter. And, and that is a, that's going to be next week. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a hairy story. It's like a horror movie story. But anyway, <clears throat> so uh, in um, last week we covered anchoring and I got some feedback and from my good friend Bill Gates, who's a very highly uh, accomplished boater. And I'm gonna share that with you in a minute. And the reason I'm gonna share that with you is I wanna tell you the story about my mistake anchoring. About 22 years ago, my best friend, Larry Flint, and uh, not the Larry Flint, Larry Flint, the mechanic from, from, uh, from Rhode Island, and uh, fellow veteran, passed away Christmas time. I miss him a lot. He was also my bass player in our band, and um, he was a year younger than me. <clears throat> anyway, um, so he and I were at Hope Island about 20, 20, 20, between 20 and 22 years ago. And we used to like go co-hogging. And what co-hogging is, is you, you dive down to the bottom and then you dig for them and you put them in a bag and then you fill up your ear and you bring them back up because you need that ear to lift you up with 30 pounds of co-hogs. So um, we decided we're gonna anchor over at Hope Island on Narragansett Bay in Rhode Island. <clears throat> well, it drops, off, it drops from 20 feet to 70 feet really, really fast. So we pulled in and it was, uh, the tide was um, kind of uh, coming in. And um, the, the tide changes probably was probably about six feet that day, maybe three feet, I don't know. Anyway, we dropped the anchor and we went down and we're in 20 feet of water. You can stay down there with your tanks for about an hour, maybe even more. So we were collecting cohogs. We got the cohogs and uh, we were buddy diving. <clears throat> And uh, we get back up to the top, and the boat's gone. <laughs> we look out, it's a mile away. <clears throat> so what had happened is, my anchor was slowly, it was not, I didn't confirm that it was nice and tight. It started sliding in the mud, and when the tide came in, and I'm now in 70 feet of water, the anchor was just hanging there. And... The boat floated away. Fortunately, we didn't have a lot of current or wind or anything crazy. <clears throat> well, Larry and I like cogs a lot. I mean, we do stuffed cogs and clam chowder and clam cakes. Anyway, I'm not giving up 30 pounds of cogs. Larry swims all the way to the boat. And I forgot where the key was. We always locked it up so nobody could go in the boat. It was a 32-foot lures at the time. <clears throat> so 
So all the way backwards, <clears throat> almost two hours later with 30 pounds of cohogs kicking backwards, moving really slow. <laughs> we got up there, I remembered where we put the key, and uh, that was a hairy experience. I've got an ex I, after I tell you the story next week about the critters, I'll tell you the story about the storm and where we woke up one day. Anyway, Miss Amy is a great guy, man. It was no better, really. I mean, so Bill Gates um, listened to the blog last week, and I want to thank you very much, Bill. You're a good man, a very fine sailor. Been sailing all probably his whole life. So this is. This is fact, what he wants everybody to know, and I, I want to thank him. This is about the scope of anchoring. You want to have at least 7 to 1 for nylon road, which means line, rope, and you want to have 5 to 1 for chain. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what that means is for every foot, you want to be 7 feet, or every foot, you want to be 5 feet out. You know, you want to let 5 feet out. So, uh, the reason is, nylon should have 20 feet of chain on it also, because you want to keep the anchor on the bottom to prevent chafing and to keep it horizontal with the bottom so it, it stays there. So, I wanted to let you know that, and I, I thank you for straightening that out, Bill. <clears throat> And you probably saved me from another trip swimming after my boat. <laughs> I always let way a lot more out than I need to, and I usually have to. Um, and so today we'll just um, talk about um, a little bit about boat etiquette. And uh, respect your fellow boaters. Um, boating people that travel, that use their boats regularly, are some of the most friendliest people you'll ever meet. People who have a boat and they just don't even have an engine in it or anything and they've got it in a dock and they use it for a place to go drinking, well, you might not want to be around those people too much. <clears throat> um, keep your radio down. Always, somebody, if somebody's coming in, and this is probably the most important thing, we, we can cover a lots about boat etiquette, but I would say that the most important thing is boating people are kind-hearted people for the most part. And when they see somebody coming in by themselves, or th they want to help them grab their lines and help them tie up. First of all, if you don't know how to tie a line on a cleat, don't do it. Second of all, if you grab that line, <clears throat> you look at and listen right to the captain. Never pull the line unless he wants you to. If you pull a line when a captain's trying to come into the slip, you could throw him off and they could be an accident, people could fall in the water. So, um, and always ask, Captain, can I help you with your lines? Um, pretty much, um, if you are uh, got people under 12 years old on your boat, make sure that they have a life preserver on. It's a law. Anyway, it's a short one today, um, and I will... Uh, have the critter story <laughs> next week oh my god uh you probably would rather watch a horror movie anyway um <clears throat> share my share my blog uh if you want to see the painting um video i don't know how these work with youtube but um it's on my youtube uh subscription page whatever you call it uh, like i said this is pretty new to me Anyway, um, I uh, really want everybody to pray for the homeless people in the Ukraine. I've been homeless. I know what that feels like, and it's a terrible feeling. Very, very terrible. So um, I'm trying to come up with some art ways to donate art to auctions that are around here to send uh, medicine and food and clothes to those people who don't have homes. And if any of you can do that in your area, please do it. Um, so my friends, my family, my fellow artists, my fellow boaters, my fellow musicians, I love and miss you all. And I do look forward to seeing my family someday. <laughs> it's been three years now. And 
I love you all. It's a big family, and they're the best family a guy could ask for.